Okay, uh, the meeting of the Atlanta County Board of Commissioners is called to order in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act of the State of New Jersey. Adequate notice of this meeting of the Atlanta County Board of Commissioners was provided in the following manner. Published in the Press Atlantic City and mailed to the Current, the Daily Journal, the Hamilton Gazette, and the Hamilton News. And has been posted on the bulletin boards in the County Office Building in Atlantic City. Stillwater Building in Northfield and the Clerk's Office in Mace Landing. Uh, we have a moment of silence after the prayer. And, uh, that is for Martin Castillo Garcia, the gentleman who um, was hit on his bicycle and died on Ocean Heights Avenue a week ago Sunday. Did you also add uh, Mike Burke that was a little bit of silence? Retired um, fireman from the Lincoln City International Airport for 36 years. Yeah. Our Heavenly Father, we ask thee to grant thy divine guidance to this board and all those charged <coughs> with responsibility to work with them. Grant that their decisions be wise, their principles sound, and their performance in office faithful. Amen. Attention, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Chairwoman, Commissioner Zane and Parker will be attending virtually today. As well as our solicitors. As our solicitors. <laughs> Dallas? Here. Bertino? Here. Corsi? Present. Days? Here. Fitzpatrick? Here. Gatto? Here. Parker? Present. Risley? Here. And Kern? Here. Okay. Um, I just want to make note that today we do have uh, the distinct pleasure of having Dr. Josette Katz, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Atlanta Cape Community College with us. I'd ask that we use this as an opportunity today to recognize all educators whose passion is to educate our children. And also, given that April is Autism Awareness Month, uh, thank you especially to those who work with children with special needs, and that we keep all educators in our thoughts and prayers. Okay, um, that brings up anyone that would like to speak during public comments, please come to the podium, state your name and the town you reside. You'll be provided up to three minutes to speak. If you're attending virtually, please type yes and the resolution number in the question and answer box. Any items not listed on the agenda, you may speak during public comments. You'll be raised from an attendee to a panelist. When you're raised, please again state your name and the town you reside. Okay, that brings us right into our resolutions. That's, that's what the resolution Oh. Dr. Josette Gatz, Atlantic Cape Community College, Senior Vice President of Academic <coughs> Affairs. Um, let me, go to the, I'm sorry, let me go to the actual resolution. Resolution recognizing April 2022 as Community College Month. Sure. Motion made and second. Any commissioner comments? Okay, any comments from the public? Okay. Um, I would uh, go to the resolution or roll call first. Do roll call. Chairwoman, can I make a comment? Yeah, we're going to. <laughs> okay. We're going to vote on it, and then we'll bring you out to the uh, I have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. But she carries. Okay, Dr. Jose Katz. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Commissioner. On behalf of Dr. Come, come over here. Because oh, you're on camera. 
camera. the camera's on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure to be here and to thank you for your continued unwavering support of Atlanta Cape and for recognizing April as Community College Month. Dr. Gobble wishes she could be here today, but I'm pleased to be here and receive the resolution and thank you on her behalf. The goal of Community College Month is to increase awareness and understanding of the value of community colleges in our nation and especially in New Jersey, where our colleges educate more than 300,000 people each year in credit, non-credit, and workforce development courses in over 60 campuses, making us the largest provider of higher education in the state. As you know, Atlanta Cape gives the highest priority to offering our community the opportunity of higher education with the support they need to succeed. For example, with the college's emergency relief, relief funding from the pandemic, we prioritized emergen emergency relief funds issued directly to students. We were also able to enhance our student supports um, including a few programs that made a huge difference to our student success. Um, we had a laptop loaner program where our students receive free loaner laptops and can keep them upon graduation, online tutoring, debt amnesty to students who incurred debt during the pandemic, and many initiatives to address food insecurity among our students, such as supermarket gift cards given directly to students food giveaways and food distribution for our food pantries. That's not to mention all the great work that takes place at Atlanta Cape every day to make a college education possible for so many people in our community. Our Center for Accessibility is making huge strides to make college education at Atlanta Cape truly accessible to all of our students with disabilities. Our advisors and counselors and the Student Success Center help our students achieve their goals through individualized career and academic advising. And we have specialized on um, educational opportunity fund and student support services programs. And finally, our faculty continually demonstrate their commitment to our student success through implementing new teaching te techniques and strategies for the evolving needs of our students and developing programs and courses that will lead our students to successful careers. I hope that Community College Month will highlight the contributions our college makes to our community and the great work that all New Jersey community colleges are doing to provide college education that's both affordable and accessible. Community College matters, Atlanta Cape matters, and our partnership matters. That is why community colleges are being recognized this month across the country. Many thanks to all of you. Oh, and we thank you. Thank you, Josette, Dr. Capps, is sorry. <laughs> you know, because it is truly an asset to our community. And I think we have a number of graduates up here from Atlanta Cape. If not graduates, we have children going there right. now. Right. So, <laughs> right. so thank you for thank everything you. that you do. Uh, may I ask a question real quick? Sure. Uh, Maybe you want to mention the um, the affordability. You talked about that a little bit, mm -hmm. but to expand upon that, I know that uh, I believe the cutoff figure is sixty-five thousand. Yes, and now what has happened? At, you're talking about the community college opportunity grant. Correct. So um, students who have uh, come from um, homes where the adjusted growth income is under sixty-five thousand are eligible for free tuition. The governor um, has just passed another initiative where those families that have an income between 65,000 and 85,000 can also reduce it, um, re will receive a reduction in their tuition. It's not totally free, but it is reduced. Um, just to mention, as part of our GERF funds, we did offer three free college credits to students in our fall and spring semester. We are also extending that for students who register for either summer or next fall by May the 3rd. So we've tried to use as much of our HERF money as we possibly could in encouraging students to come back to college and to help to, to um, offset their tuition. Another initiative that we're really strongly involved in is open educational resources where um, many of our, our courses now do not have any textbook costs. 
So we had a huge initiative at the college to lower textbook costs um, by using open educational resources. So as I said, we're looking at all ways in which we might be able to make um, it more affordable to our students. Did you have something else? I just think it's important to get that message out. And, uh, you know, I went to community college and my, both my boys and my youngest boys go in there now and he's got his free laptop, which I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get a great education there. And, uh, we're just so happy to support the college. And That's we important. appreciate it. It really is an asset for our community. Okay. Which way? This way? No, it's upside down. Upside down. Oh, it's upside down. <laughs> this is kind of the way the whole thing's going to go. That way you can read it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Oh, this is great. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'll entertain a motion to adopt the March 29, 2022 minutes as presented. Second. Okay. Motion made second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> it's very exciting. It is very exciting. It's a very exciting meeting. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, that brings us to Ordinance 3. Ordinance authorizing acquisition of an easement from parcels of property designated as Block 223, Lots 1 and 2 on the tax map of the Township of Hamilton for the reconstruction of bridge structure HML 18 over Skulls Run along Weymouth Road by means of agreements or by condem condemnation pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 12-1 and following and NJSA 20 colon 3-1 and following final reading. First. First main second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing hearing none. Anything from the public? Okay, well, roll we'll call. Dallas. Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. <coughs> Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Moji Carrick. Okay, that brings us to ordinance number <coughs> four. Ordinance permitting the Atlantic County Department of Public Safety Division of Adult Detention to hire county correctional police officers on a temporary basis with conversion to permanent status upon completion of an appropriate full basic course for correction officers and to permit the Atlantic County Sheriff to hire sheriff officers on a temporary basis pursuant to Public Law 2021-C406, first reading. Motion. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair. <coughs> just, just to highlight for the public's sake, um, this is going to allow us to hire for the correctional facility and sheriff's department outside of the current civil service process, which we are a member, a member of civil service. Um, we have had issues getting lists from civil service and, and getting um, the, the, the plethora of candidates that we need um, to backfill our positions that we have. So there was a new law that was passed that allows this on a temporary basis. So um, by us, adopting this ordinance it'll put the piece in place for us to um, to move forward with that once the guidelines are completed by the state of New Jersey um, which will be a great thing uh, for us and then once these um, officers are hired and they go through training they then will become civil service employees um, it's just a little bit of a different process given you know coming out of COVID and the challenges with hiring so just want to highlight that thank you any other comments? Uh, Chair? Yeah, uh, 
I mean, civil service was, was created for a reason. And um, if, you know, we do pass this, I would like to only see this uh, be put into effect if they cannot get a list. In other words, in an emergency type situation. I mean, th there's so many things that could go wrong um, by just hiring without testing. Okay, I mean, I, I know there's extensive backgrounds that get done once you in the, you're in that hiring process, but, um, uh, you know, civil service is, is good and civil service is bad. You know, is, does the county, either for corrections or for the sheriff's office, plan to hold a separate entrance exam to get their own list separate of civil service, or is it just word of mouth, come in and fill the application out, and we're going to hire you? I mean, there's there's a lot of questions that I, th I think they go along with this. Um, people take civil service tests, and there are lists. Civil service should should be providing them lists. Um, but again, you know, in, in the law enforcement community now, it's it's tough getting you know law enforcement officers to, to take a test and and you want to take the, the position, um, especially at, at some of the starting salaries around the state. Um, so, so again, I think that, you know, if this is passed, if and when this is passed, that it should only be used in an emergency type situation when you cannot get a civil service list. And if, I, if, I, if I can, we did discuss that in, in the administration committee yesterday, and uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Fedorka did share with us is that we're not getting lists at this time. Okay. We're not getting updated. Yeah, that's right. Right. Um, so I think we are in that emergent basis, which is why we're trying to put the steps in place to, you know, help us over that bridge. Um, I think there are questions in terms of process. Again, as I understand it, the state is still putting the guidelines around that together. Right. We're, right. we're just putting the piece in place so that we could take advantage of that program should we and if we need to or want to. Yeah, and just re remind you, NJAC, NJAC passed legislation to do this. So just remember that. So we, yes. we're, in order for us to actually physically go and take the next steps, we need to come to the board, the board needs to pass it, and then, and then you know, there's an estoppel period, Jim will talk about that, but there's an estoppel period. Once that ends, then we can go ahead. We, we, we went through, if you remember, the warden, did explain to you what we did. He had uh, a session one one night with job fair, had 80 people show up, and that, that got dwindled down by the time you did, you, you were there. You, by the time you do the interview, by the time you, you, you go through, you know, your uh, your your evaluations, you go through the sites and everything, you wind up with about, uh, you know, I think 10 people or 15 people out of the 80 that actually we would sign off on that they could work. But the issue is, is you can't do that until you go through this process. So, I mean, there are people out there ready to go. Is there a time frame put on this? With the, you know, the state there, do they have a time frame? Like, I don't know. The, the actual legislation does not take effect. I think it's July, it's six months after the date the governor signed the bill. Um, but the reason for us coming now is so that we have that in place. So when that time frame does come, uh, the warden, who already has certain people lined up, can be ready to act in the sheriff the same way. So, um, you know, uh, we think it's a, a great advantage to having this because uh, both Mr. Fedorko and uh, uh, Warden Kelsey would tell you uh, they've been begging for lists, and no lists have been forthcoming. It's not just recently, this is going back over a couple of years now, they're not getting lists. So that's a problem um, for them to be able to properly staff, particularly the jail, and for the sheriff to be able to get to get uh, quali you know, qualified people on. The other, the other thing, and, and I, I'm not sure if, if this happened when you were the sheriff, but one of the things I mean, I, that I can, can re recant very easily is, is that we would get lists the, the yeah. hundreds of the people on the list Ocean County. I mean, I'm going to give you a real life yeah. situation. We hired 20 of them and uh, and as openings happened in Ocean County, they'd all go back to Ocean County. So, And then we had one from Camden. Same thing again. I forget it was 10 or 11 people. You hired the, the they, they were on the civil service list. You hired them and as openings happened in Camden, they would go back to Camden. It was closure for them. So I'm just saying, that's the other thing about those lists. 
you know, you, you get stuck with the list. And by the way, I, I, and I, I don't think the warden is on, I don't say him. But if, but if I remember correctly, uh, and Mr. Fedorko is on, he may remember. I think we got a list from like Essex County. So, I mean, you, they go ahead and list. I mean, who's going to come down from Essex County? Quite truthfully, I mean, that's, that's a long walk. Okay. Any Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risling? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Now brings us to Resolution 82. 2022 Atlantic County Budget Final Reading. Motion. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the commission? Okay. Um, I, you know, I want to take the opportunity to thank administration and the budget committee you know, for the work that they've done on behalf of the residents of Atlantic County on this year's budget. Budget eating is an art, not a science, especially as we take into account the impact of the pandemic has had and continues to have. So my, my sincere thanks to all. Okay. Resolution 82. Okay. Any other comments uh, from the public? Seeing none? No. <coughs> Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Accused. <coughs> Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Carter? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us resolution 83. Atlantic County Public Health Annual Budget Notice 2022 Final Reading. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the committee? Seeing here and none, anything from the public? Any love roll call? Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 84. Atlantic County Library Annual Budget Notice 2022 Final Reading. Second. Motion. Second. Motion was made in second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing no, hearing none. Anything from the public? Hey, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 85. Resolution to exceed the county budget appropriation limits and to establish a 2022 CAP Bank NJSA 48 colon 4 dash 45.14 final reading. Motion. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing here, not anything for the public. Nope. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, we'll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? <coughs> Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution. I'm sorry. Can I just say quick get a word in um, quick enough when you were talking about <laughs> comments? But just from the um, from the budget perspective, um, I just again, you know, the committee I think did a really great job working together. Um, with our staff, and I, and I also just want to give a shout out to our staff in terms of um, the amount of grants um, that we sought out, uh, and particularly this past year to offset the costs of a lot of new costs that we saw as a result of the pandemic, as a result of new voting rules, you know, various things. Um, we're making an investment in our people, we're making an investment in our, in our uh, properties, we are continuing to improve infrastructure around the county, and we're, we're delivering a small tax decrease uh, to our residents. So um, I think it's really great work, and it's a lot of hard work by a lot of people across the county. And um, just a kudos to um, everybody for, for the work uh, put in to get here. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, resolution 168. Amending resolution number 40, adopted February 2nd, 2016, a grant application to the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the replacement 
of Lakes Creek Bridge EH29 project in Ake Harbor Township to extend the term date only, no additional cost. Second. Commissioner Main, second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing here none, anything from the public? <coughs> Okay, why call? Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 169. Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety for the Highway Traffic Safety Program grant funding amount not to exceed $43,500. So moved. Motion made second. Any comments from our commissioners? Seeing here none. Anything from the public? Okay, well, roll call. For Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 172. Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety for the Drug Recognition Expert Enforcement Program grant funding, amount not to exceed $115,000. Motion made second. Any comments from the commissioners? Okay. <coughs> okay. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. I know there's a little bit of a time lapse, so just in case uh, the gentlemen that are on uh, virtually just yell out or something because we do have just a slight time lapse. So if I don't catch you, just you know, try to scream. Or <laughs> okay, resolution 171. The only time lapse on this day can get to hit the mute and hum you, but. <laughs> I was waiting for Parker to say something. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to come in a time lapse. I give you the person. <laughs> Resolution 171. Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Division of Highway Traffic Safety for the Atlantic County Cares for Kids Child Passenger Safety Program grant funding. Amount not to exceed $25,450. Second. Any comments from our commissioners? Seeing hearing none, anything from the public? Okay, well, we'll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Brings us to resolution 172. Resolution to execute and file a spending plan for the 2021 Recycling Enhancement Act Tax Fund entitlement program with the Department of Environmental Protection amount not to exceed two hundred fifty one thousand one hundred dollars. Motion to remain second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing hearing none, anything from the public? Hey, we'll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. <coughs> Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern. Yes, motion carries. Resolution 173. Grant application and acceptance from the New Jersey Historical Commission to support projects and programs for local history from 2023 through 2025 grant funding. So Amount moved. not to exceed $90,000. So moved. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing, hearing none. Anything from the public? Okay, well, we'll call the Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. <coughs> and that's resolution 174. Grant application and acceptance from the United States Department of Justice for the Liberty Mid Atlantic High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Task Force grant funding. Amount not to exceed $177,000. Second, any comments from the commissioner? Seeing, hearing none, anything from the public? Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 176. 
Grant application and acceptance from the United States Department of Justice through the state of New Jersey for the Edward Byrne Memorial Grant, funded amount $116,669, in-kind match $6,576. Motion made second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing here none, anything from the public? Okay, well, we'll Ballas? Yes. Cortina? Yes. Orsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, that uh, brings us to resolution 177. Okay. Set. <laughs> <laughs> Just so the record's clear, I think on the last one, uh, Sonia announced 176. It was actually 175 you were voting on. Right. I don't call the <coughs> Yeah. Somebody said it. Okay. That's, that's correct. I think we're, we just moved 175. I think you're about to vote for 176. Yeah. are about to consider 176. Grant acceptance from the New Jersey Department of Children and Families for the Child Advocacy Center Development Grant, amount not to exceed $99,536.10. Motion. Second. Second. Motion made second. Any comments from the question? Just want to highlight, you know, we've been um, accepting various grants for this uh, for the last, I'd say, at least two years uh, to get this together. and. Uh, Chief the Shields mentioned that we're kind of in the home stretch now uh, to be able to, to get this open um, in the very near future, which is a very, very big deal. Um, they've put a lot of work into this and getting this together, and um, it's really going to be a benefit to our county. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it, and just want to highlight the work being done on such an important program. Thank you. Any other comments from the commissioners? For the public. <laughs> Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, that brings us to the professional service agreements with resolution 177. Amending resolution number 600 adopted December 1, 2020. A professional services agreement with Dixon Associates Engineering Limited Liability Company for design services for the Estelle Manor Park to extend the term date and to provide additional services. Net increase, $25,300. Motion. Motion remains second. 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 <laughs> Motion second. Any comments from the commissioners? Okay, anything from the public? Okay, well, I will call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Parker? Yes. Oh. yes. Riz I got it. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us to competitive contracts with resolution 178. Competitive contract with Barron Jewish Older American Services and Stockton Center on Successful Aging for Additional Older Americans Act Area Plan. Services at 15% funding. Amount not to exceed $51,000. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any comments from the commissioners? Just want to highlight on these two. Um, we got a pretty good presentation from, um, I forget actually who made the presentation. Roberta Cicati. Roberta Cicati. Yeah. Um, about the services that are going to be offered through uh, the contracts listed on 178 and 179, particularly for uh, Alzheimer's and dementia uh, patients uh, here in, in the uh, county. Um, just want to urge everybody to go visit our website to get information about the services that are available um, and, and who's eligible and that kind of thing. So, thank you. Uh, any other comments from the Seeing here none, anything from the public? Okay, well, we'll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? <coughs> yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, resolution 179. Competitive contract with Baccarat Institute for Rehabilitation and Atlantic Care Health Services for additional Older Americans Act area plan services at 100% funding. Amount not to exceed $103,000. 
motions remain second. Any comments from the commission? Seeing here or not, I think I'll follow. Hey, Rob, we'll call. Ballas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us to uh, big contracts with resolution 180. Amending Resolution 634, adopted November 23rd, 2021, a bid contract with Command Company for the resurfacing of the Atlantic County Justice Facility Kitchen Area Parking Lot, amount not to exceed $399,765.30. Motion second. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 181. Renewal bid contracts with various vendors to furnish and deliver miscellaneous medical supplies to members of the Atlantic County Cooperative. Amount not to exceed $630,478.38. Second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing here, none. Anything from the public? Take a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 182. We know bid contracts with various vendors to furnish and deliver additional medical supplies to members of the Atlantic County Cooperative. Amount not to exceed seventy-six thousand one hundred and ninety dollars. Motion. Sure. Motion remains second. Any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair. Yes. Are these different medical supplies than in one eighty-one that we just? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I, 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 I think if I understood correctly, this should not say Atlanta County Cooperative. This is for strictly for. 182 strictly for our agencies, in, in particular uh, Meadowview. So this is really not for the cooperative. We're, so we're going to have to adjust that. That's correct. Right? Yesterday, they, uh, uh, our purchasing agent Paul McConover made that comment yesterday. That, that 181 is for the cooperative. 182 is strictly for county agencies. So, were we voting on it? Yes. Yeah. Palm, are you there? Yes, I am. Um, so, to just, would you just re remind us about what the difference, distinction between 181 and 182 was about the cooperative? Uh, the resolution 181 was for various medical supplies uh, for not just county use, but for uh, open bar, member bar cooperative. 182 was only specialty items used by our nursing home as well as um, some Narcan. Uh, but it's used just by the county, so it was not supposed to be a cooperative. There was a typo here. It should just be for land and county use, not land and county cooperative. Yeah. 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 Comments from the commissioners? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have to go back to vote. Right. So we, had, we do have a motion and a second on the floor. Just to clarify that that would, that would also apply not just to the title, but to the, where it states it in the resolution. It states in the resolution, yeah. correct. Okay. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor for the resolu resolution with the uh, changes. Uh, do we have any other further comments? I got a motion and a second on the original resolution. I think that's our solicitor. Our solicitor, are we saying this right? So, I think it's acceptable if you vote, change. Okay. If you vote to approve it as the amendment was suggested by the commissioner. And uh, if you confirm that, then yes. Okay, You'll thanks. accept the entire thing as it is. Okay. So we're now voting on to approve it as the amendment. Okay, and we are going to vote to amend and approve it as amended all in one shot. Okay. Sure. 
we just voted to amend. Yeah, yeah we, get, we so did we're just we're vote to amend. Yeah. So now we're just going back to vote it, vote as on it as amended. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask for a motion in a second again. Oh, we can just do a roll call. We'll yeah, we'll do a roll call. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Ballas. Do we need public comment? Very good. Do we need public comment now? Okay. Ballas. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Dave. Uh, yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Seattle. Yes. Parker. Yes. Bisley. Yes. And Kern. Yes. And motion carries. And thank you. Okay, resolution 183 under change orders. Change order number one, a contract with Arrowack Paving Company Incorporated for the resurfacing of Tilton Road, Section 5 in A Harbor Township to extend the term date only, no additional cost. Motion. Motion has been made and second. Any comments from commissioners? Just curious, what is Section 5? Uh, Doug, you there? Or John? They, they went through yeah, this. I'm here. Yeah. Um, it starts at um, Washington Avenue and Silver Road mm -hmm. uh, at the old Carter Circle. Okay. And it's all the way up to uh, the airport circle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I see we're extending the term, the date only, but. That's finished. It's been paved. Yes. It's been striped. Yep. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. What are, what well, are you just, well, that's Doug. Can you? In order to make payments, we have to extend the contract because the contract expires. So we just have to, you know, to finish out the payments. In it's the process, an administrative process. Yeah. Through, we have to go. Here, not anything from the public. Okay, we'll have to roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 184. Change order number one a contract with Arrowack Paving Company Incorporated for the resurfacing of Third Street sections 1A and 1B in the town of Hamilton to extend the term date only, no additional cost. Motion. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? It, it's the same thing. It all has to do with like the federal aid and the timing to pay, to for all that money to like pay out appropriately. That's, that's all right. it is. Right. <coughs> I like them to talk, well, I like, like them to talk about it because if, if you read the summary on this, I mean, I can regurgitate the summary to you. So look, it's like 293 days. It's, mm -hmm. so it's not only done. I mean, I, I, I had this conversation with them about those guys almost four years ago about, you know, Third Street. I'm only telling them that's what happens. So, I mean, they can go through, the, I mean, it, I, I got to tell you, they go through, administratively, it's, it's brutal what they have to do in order to get a project through, you know, through to get the funding, and then, and then when, once it gets done, the, the the technical issues that they have to go through. For example, you know, the utilities are horrible to get them to move when they have to move a pole or a line or something like that. They, they go through hell to try to get it done. But, so, so anyway, that, that's why it's good to listen to, the, to their, <laughs> to them explain to you. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the Fishers? And anything from the public? Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> and it's to resolution 185. Change order number one and final a contract with Richard E. Pearson Construction Company Incorporated for the emergency replacement of the New York Avenue Bridge, HML 66. New York Avenue over Gravely Run in Hamilton Township, net increase two hundred seventy-four thousand four hundred and five dollars and thirty-four cents. Motion. Second. Motion made. Second. Any comments from commissioners? <coughs> Seeing hearing none. I think we're public. Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Days. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. 
Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Brings us to resolution 186. Change order number two and final, a contract with Richard E. Pearson Construction Company Incorporated for the replacement of Cotton Mill Bridge, HML 54, Mill Street, County Route 559, over Great A. Harbor River in Hamilton Township. Net decrease, $72,799.25. Motion. Motion has been made. Second. Any comments from the commissioners? Yeah, the interesting thing on this is that <coughs> the Utilities were all going to be moved temporarily off the bridge while we did the replacement and then um, put back. And I think it was Verizon decided to permanently relocate their utilities in a different direction. So uh, we didn't have to uh, pay to do the relocation, the temporary relocation back. So that's where that savings is coming in. Any other comments? Seeing right. hearing none, and for the public. Okay, while we'll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Dees? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Barker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That brings us into miscellaneous uh, resolutions with resolution 187. Amending resolution number 669 adopted December 7, 2021, an alternate method contract with Unitronics Data Systems Incorporated provide maintenance services for the applicants and administrative software. Amount not to exceed $6,382. Second. Second. Motion is the main second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing here and I think from Polo. Okay, well, we're all Ballas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 188. Amending resolution number 319 adopted June 1, 2021, an alternate method agreement with NTS Software Solutions Incorporated to reflect the name change to Initium Softworks Limited Liability Company, no additional cost. Motion. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from our commissioners? Seeing your none, I think. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yeah. Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 189. Amending resolution number 161 adopted March 16, 2021, an interlocal agreement with the Township of Galloway to conduct a drainage study to extend term date only, no additional cost. Motion. Motion. Motion remains seconded. Uh, <laughs> any comments from the commissioners? Okay, seeing here none. Anything from the public? Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Barker? Yes. Risley? <coughs> and Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 190. Alternate method contract with Synergex International Corporation to provide maintenance services for the applicants and administrative software. Amount not to exceed $42,658. Motion. Second. Motion for main seconded. Any comments from the commission? Seeing hearing none, anything from the public? Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertina? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 191. Resolution authorizing the county to assign a military surplus vehicle to Hamilton Fire Department independent fire, volunteer <coughs> fire company number two to use during disasters and emergency response. No cause. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing here none, I think I'm called. Okay, we'll have the roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. This to resolution 192. Resolution requesting permission for the dedication by rider for revenues collected for Parking Offenses Adjudication Act 
NJS 39 4-139.9 by the Central Municipal Court of Atlantic County. Motion. Second. Motion made second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing here none, anything from the public? Okay, well, Dallas? Yes. <coughs> Pertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? All right. Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. <coughs> and Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 193. Amending resolution number 629, adopted December 21, 2021, to clarify the procedure for payment of the municipal prosecutors and municipal public defenders and resolution number 146, adopted March 29, 2022, to provide a fund for the payment of the conflict municipal prosecutor and public defender serving in the Central Municipal Court of Atlantic County. Motion. Motion to remain seconded. Any comments from the commissioners? Madam Chair. Yeah. Just to uh, Mr. Ferguson, was this as a result of a, uh, any conversation with the policy committee? No, what it was is that uh, a couple of the uh, providers, a couple of the prosecutors, and I think one of the public defenders submitted bills for their January services, and uh, there had been apparently a holdup or a delay in getting them paid. So we wanted to try to streamline the process whereby they would send their bills in to my office. Uh, Chandra Anderson, who's my paralegal, and who worked on this project with me would make sure those bills were promptly transmitted to purchasing so that that payment process can commence um, because you know one of the problems is a lot of the people all of the people really who perform these services in this new municipal court are solo practitioners and for them to wait on a payment now the prosecutor's bill i think it's uh, seventy two hundred dollars a month they, that's broken down, their contract is broken down on a one twelve basis to wait 45, 60 days or more. One of the persons, who I won't name, uh, submitted a bill at, at the end of January for the January services and wasn't paid until I think it was the first week of April. Uh, quite frankly, that, that's just too long to wait. And I'm, not, I'm not blaming anybody. It's a new venture. There's kinks to iron out, but we're trying to uh, streamline this process so that it's it's fair to everybody. We can stay on top of this and, and keep the you know pay these people appropriately for the services that they're they're providing there. So that that's the reason for it. And with when we set up and you, uh, you approve the appointment of a conflict prosecutor, a conflict public defender, uh, that was my fault. I neglected to at that time make sure that there was a, a pot of money designated for when they're called upon to perform conflict services. So that's why that's put in there as well. Thank you. Any other comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, uh, anything from the public? Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Resolution 194. Contract with Dominion Voting Systems Incorporated for programming of the ABC Advantage voting machines amount not to exceed $100,819.46. Motion carries. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the Hearing none. Anything from the public? Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. This is resolution 195. Contract with election systems and software for the programming and coding of the Express Vote XL voting machines and Express Polls electronic poll books for 2022. Amount not to exceed $40,000. Motion. Motion remains seconded. Uh, any comments from the commissioners? Seeing here, not anything from the public. Okay, we'll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Brings us to 
Resolution 196. Contract with the Election Support and Services Incorporated to program, test, and certify the Election Day Dominion ABC voting machines and the early voting election systems and software Excel voting machines for 2022. Amount not to exceed $58,000. Motion. Motion has been made and seconded. Any comments or commissioners? Seeing, hearing none. Anything from the call? Okay, we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Brings <coughs> us to 197. Contract with Clifford B. Finkel, Jr. Incorporated for the transportation of the early voting and election day machines, e-poll books and carts. Amount not to exceed $75,000. Motion made second. Any comments from the commissioner? Okay, well, roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? <clears throat> Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, that brings us to appointments. I'll entertain a motion to combine and adopt resolution 198 to 202. Uh, okay, uh, motion made second. Any comments from the commissioners? Anything from the public? Okay, roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. It was resolution 203. Appointment of Leslie White Corsi to the Atlantic County Youth Services Commission in a mandated position. Motion. Motion has been made and second. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing hearing none. Anything from the public? Okay. And we'll have a roll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Days? Fitzpatrick? Yes. Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, at this time, uh, with roadway solicitations, I'll retain a motion to combine and adopt resolutions 204 to 209 roadway solicitations. Mm -hmm. Second. Motion remains seconded. Any comments or questions? Anything from the public? Okay, well, roll we'll call. Ballas? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, we have our commissioner sponsored resolutions yes. and we have resolution to elect. Resolution strongly urging Governor Murphy to appoint a qualified Atlantic County resident, resident to the New Jersey Council on the Arts. Sponsors, Karen L. Fitzpatrick and Amy L. Gatto. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the commissioners? Thank you. Um, this, this is simply to highlight the fact that nobody from the southern counties is represented on this state board and hasn't been for 10 years. And this doesn't cost anything. It just, uh, and there are people who have been fully vetted waiting for two and three and four years to be appointed. Um, it's just a paperwork situation and an action situation, and we want that action to happen. <coughs> because we have very qualified and talented people here in Atlantic County who would be great on the, the Council for the Arts. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important that our, our voice is represented, and absolutely. That's why I'm happy to go Thank you. Hey, any other commissioner comments? So, so Madam Chair, if I may. Um, so, once this resolution is passed, um, this is not one of the situations where we've got to make sure it gets to where it needs to go. And it probably needs to go to the commissioner of the state. Authority, through the governor's office, 
this, this comes to an authority, some type of, of an authority. So uh, it needs to get to whoever the commissioner is of authorities. Okay, well, so, uh, I have been in contact with the people who do the appointing. Um, I thought I. It's the state side of the Council of the Arts. Yeah, I, I have that, the name of that person. I don't have it in front of me right now. But so it is a recommendation from the governor's office, correct? We're, we're sending it to the governor's right. office. We're sending the resolution to the governor's office. Right, but the, the governor's office, I Then recommend yes, to the entity. And we also want to send copies of the resolution to the, the other government. counties that aren't represented. So that maybe we can, you know, join together and get some action on this together. Because there are three vacancies right now. Plenty of room for everybody. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to delay it. I'm, I'm going to put the deputy's advocate. Governor's office in March, I'm about to say, okay, you have a name? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They have two or three people already been vetted. They seriously vet these people. And they've been waiting and waiting. So, yes. So, have you had this conversation with Alex at all? Alex. And the governor's office. Uh, Alex, I don't think I have. No, this this really wouldn't be his avenue. I, I don't think I've had. Well, it's not his too. avenue, but he's in there with the deputy yeah. to the the deputy to the. Okay. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah. Any other comments on the papers? Amy got connections in the front office. <laughs> Okay, anything from the public? Yeah. Okay, we'll have a roll call. Alice? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, going into uh, the next uh, resolution, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, April Autism Awareness Month. Autism refers to a broad range of uh, conditions characterized by challenges with social skills, repetitive behavior, speech, and nonverbal communications. According to the Center for Disease Control, autism affects an estimated 1 in 44 children in the United States today. And again, I do thank, I know we did uh, mention it last time, uh, Ken and Isabel Mosca, who do a great, great deal throughout our community in bringing attention and raising funds for this. Okay, and that brings us to Resolution 212. Resolution recognizing April 2022 as Autism Awareness Month. Sponsor Maureen Kern. Motion. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any comments for our commissioners? Madam Chair. Yep, Commissioner Bells. Yep. First of all, thank you for, for bringing this forward. Um, to, as Sheriff and even before, did a lot of work, and still do a lot of work with uh, cases for autism. I saw this on the agenda and uh, I got really excited. I was hoping that you know you were going to hand out little bubbles and we were going to go outside and blow bubbles, but I don't oh, see any here. On, I don't see any here on the counter, so you should have had a visual. Oh, you're right. right. Yeah. Frank should have gone with him. Yeah. There you go. I'll blow some bubbles when I get home. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from the commissioners? Anything from the public? Okay. Ballas? Yes. Rutino? Yes. Horsey? Yes. Days? Fitzpatrick? Yes. Gatto? Yes. Parker? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. That concludes the writ written portion of our agenda and there will be reports and special committees of the board. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have one thing. The Atlanta County Board of Agriculture recently met. Uh, we are going to be doing the legislative dinner, the legislative event, a little bit different this year. It used to be that at a restaurant. Uh, it was last year because of COVID, they didn't yeah. have it. Yeah. Uh, this year they're going to do it at in a Harbor City at a farmer's house, La Monica's Walking Bird Farm. It's uh, You'll see it in your emails. It's on May the 6th. Uh, it's a rain or shine event because it is an in, they have an indoor facility over there. They're looking forward to seeing anyone, uh, obviously, that has questions or someone that wants to learn a little bit more about the uh, issues that agriculture is having here in Atlanta County and around the state. So I just wanted to make sure I brought that to the board's attention. And you can say answer your emails if you want to uh, RSVP so you get an idea how many people are coming 
they care of food accommodations. Mm -hmm. Just just a quick aside, so Walking Bird Farm has a lovely CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. I've been getting it for years. You can get a lot of really great produce weekly from about June through October, and it's really fantastic. It's a great experience to go out to the farm every week and bring the family and stuff like that, so I don't look forward to it. It's going to be great. The former B and B farm too. If anybody knew uh, Art Brown, who was the commissioner of agriculture for Madam uh, Chair. Yes. Okay, commissioner reports. What's that? Are we, are we in commissioner reports? Yeah. I couldn't. We I are. couldn't hear for a second there. Sorry. Okay. We are. May I have the floor for just a second? Absolutely. Sure. I'd like to give a report on the parks and environment um, meeting yeah. that we had, subcommittee meeting that we had. Um, Ms. Francis Brown spoke to the group regarding the Lane County Bikeway West. Uh, the firm WSP completed a feasibility study for the proposed extension in December of 2021. The firm has identified three alignment uh, alternatives for close to close the 16 mile gap between the existing western terminus of the Atlantic County Bikeway East and the planned eastern terminus of the Camden County Link Trail. Um, the 22.3 the the mile New Jersey 54, um, Route 54 slash rail corridor alignment was selected as the preferred overall alignment based on the availability of right of way along the Route 54 uh, roadway. Or highway, a high degree of separation from traffic, particularly along the rail um, corridor and proximity to population centers and bike slash pedestrian connections. This route will have 11 possible trailheads providing various entrance, entrances and exit points. There were three challenging areas of focus area of, for focus areas that were that are going to require further investigation. In addition to route alternatives through the town, there was considerable discussion uh, regarding the feasibility of utilizing the old tr the old train trestle across the Great and Harbor River. Francis then updated the group on the need for a technical analysis and the identification of possible sources of funding. These include NJDOT TAP funding and other sources such as the NJDOT Regional Program of the County Open Space Trust. Uh, she further clarified that from that permitting, permitting would be part of the preliminary engineering and that the preferred <coughs> trail would be 10 feet. So it's our report, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner. Do we have any other reports from our commissioners? Okay, uh, any unfinished business? Madam Chair. Okay, just to Jerry, um, just to follow up, I know members of the DHC fire department would be on. Um, where are we at with the design phase for the beacon lights at the firehouses in EHT? We're also, also, we, uh, just so you know, the gentleman I think I mentioned to you, um, uh, he is presently finalizing the um, the work in Vendor Margate Longport. That'll go on, that'll go on a hi hiatus after the summer, so you'll start working on that now, you know, that, that deadline. And are, are we going to move it all on a pedestrian light for out front of the winter? I've, I've asked this guy, I mean, they'll, they'll, they put that on, there's a work, there's a work plan for, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Newman, Mr. Newman will look at that direction. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Any other unfinished business? Okay, that brings any new business. I just have one thing on, you know, we don't all live in a bubble. I'm sure you are getting phone calls as I've been getting phone calls recently, I believe, on the uh, issues surrounding the Department of Education uh, and some of their uh, some of their proposals in this year's uh, curriculum changes to elementary education. <coughs> um, I know we're getting, I know you're getting, if I'm getting, I know everybody else is. Obviously, that a lot of these parents are really concerned about the type of curriculum being taught in grammar school, and they're bringing to our attention. 
Um, I just wanted to inform the board I'm going to be presenting a resolution at our next meeting. I'm going to try to address it. I will copy and CC you guys on the language I'm using. Um, but um, I think it's an opportunity, and they've reached out to us to step up for children. This board has time and time again when children's uh, health, wealth, and health being, well being are, are really just at, at a point um, need to be addressed. This board's been pretty proactive and done the right thing. And I think this is something we can all agree with. Um, you know, I've got a new grandson that's a month old, and you sit there and you're looking at them, thinking about the, some of the curriculum and, and some of the changes some people in Trenton recognize that they think should be taught at an early age. And, and I think children need a chance to grow up. They could learn to be and be whoever they want, the one that's their decision to make that. I think this is an opportunity for the board to uh, maybe make a statement on this, and I'll be bringing it back to the board uh, for your consideration. Thank you. Yeah, I agree to see the call. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, any other new business? Okay, here and here none. We've received copies of written communication and petitions. Uh, does any commissioner have any comments on any of the papers? I had an email and a phone call uh, from someone who lives on Dolphin Avenue. Um, they received this letter from Dubois and Associates talking about um, applications being made for a new warehouse and training facility on, um, yeah. on <coughs> Dolphin yeah, Avenue right, yeah. Yeah. and concerns about traffic, uh, concerns that um, there's already speeding and, and right. not uh, obeying the, the limits on Dolphin Avenue. This would only exacerbate the problem, construction uh, traffic as well as increased traffic for the use of a larger training facility well it's not it's not an additional training facility the training facility is already there it's it's the uh, just, just so you understand the, if you all remember the uh, for early voting the uh, superintendent of elections was here talking about machines right. that she needed we were using part of their warehouse for, for our storage materials, computers, furniture, uh, for, and we, we store them for uh, you know, auction. So we decided to build our own facility. So, so the facility is going to be roughly 10,000 square feet. If you were to go down the end of the street, if, if you were to look at Meadowview, it's right to the left of Meadowview. And it's, if, to the left of Meadowview is the Board of, uh, Board of Elections building. Our building is, is, is the next lot over. Within the Board of Elections now is is roughly, uh, I guess maybe like anywhere between 1,500 and 2,000 square feet where all the police are going now to do, they have a, a training, they have training modules to learn how to shoot you know, under certain circumstances. So because the Board of Elections needs all that space, we're moving that, that training module into the, into the new warehouse. So they're, right now, all the cops are coming there, they're doing training now. I mean, they're there. The, the, the issue about bringing trucks and whatever else in for, for putting equipment in, in the building, we're doing that now. I mean, so they, whatever is happening now, it will be happening when we build the building, other than the construction. I, we can't, you gotta, have, you gotta have somebody come in and do the construction. Yeah, and I mean, there's, no, there's no better uh, deterrent of speeding than the at least come cool. there for training. Right, right. But um, the, the, as I understood it, the, the warehousing pieces, if you remember, um, Superintendent of Elections had uh, come to us with the need <coughs> of that additional space for that storage. So I think that's, I, I don't see that generating that much more traffic. Um, I, I mean, I, I got the same call as well, and, and I brought it up because I was going to bring it up as well. Um, but. Yeah, I, I, other than construction, I don't, I don't see it How long would come being from? much more of an issue than exists today. How long a construction period? My understanding is construction is roughly 9 to 12 months. That's my understanding. I also had a um, question from yes. uh, Northfield Council yes. people, so I told them so that exactly what you had told me, right. I told Jerry to get yeah. an answer when I got that, so that they 
Yeah. yeah, just to clarify yeah. before yeah. we all start yeah. getting emails. When Jerry said that the police officers would be there to learn how to shoot, they're actually not shooting there. It's a it's a shoot, don't shoot. A, basically, it's a right. video right. Right. simulation where you're firing you know, a video gun into a screen. You're not, there's no live ammunition. Oh, oh right, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> so. no, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, really, I mean, uh, it's a great the prior training. chief of detectives took me through there and said, yeah, here's, here's the gun, and and this is what police go through. I gotta tell you, I mean, if, if, if it's really an experience. I can tell you this, my heart rate jumped immediately, because you're put in a situation where you know, you. Uh, somebody's uh, describing to you a situation. I'm assuming the cops go through them. There's, there are many situations. The one that they put me in was a gentleman sitting there who, who they described as having mental illness with a gun near him. And then and then the parking lot to your left. And what you see in, in the parking lot as you stand there is you begin to see movement to your left. And so there's this person walking towards you. And you, so, so now you're standing there and you're, and you're by yourself. And you're, you're standing there saying to the gentleman, you know, please uh, step away from the gun and this guy on your left is continually walking towards you so you're not sure whether he's coming towards you because he's with him or he just happens to be in the parking lot at the time so you know and it was Darren Dooley so Darren's over there telling me just you know pay pay attention to your left he says and whatever so I mean I went through that it's but, but there and, and obviously you know uh, the Commission of Alice can tell you there's, there's many many of those situations so so that's what what it's for it's it's the, the train officer so it says in the letter that there's a public comment period written. Yeah. Um, you can send letters to yeah. the DEP. Is there going to be a, an in-person, like a town hall or anything like that for people to come and uh, take a look at the plan or and voice their concerns? I don't know if we have to or not. We, we might have to do that with the permit. I'll, I'll check that. I'm not sure if we have to do that uh, based on permit. You know, for some of the road projects, we do. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll check that. written for um, communications uh, I know I know I've gotten a couple I don't know if I'm gonna call it complaint but concerns I guess um, and I think Commissioner Dace has as well with regard to the letter that the county has sent out um, related to the plastic bag ban and about you know, the Department of Health I think is going to be coming to inspect everybody and there's you know warnings and, and fines and I think the consensus was the letter sounded a little harsh. My assumption was that it was language that they had to say to somebody. Um, so just can you just maybe shed some light there, like what exactly is going to happen come May 4th? What what are we doing as a county? Are we, I mean, our business, should businesses be like? No, they shouldn't worry. They, 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 okay. they, they will, they, I, most businesses, as you know, have already been preparing, they've been preparing yeah. themselves to, to tell everybody. As a matter of fact, a number of them actually, now when you, when you check out, there's actually the bags there that you can purchase yep. with that yeah. okay. Now, I am assuming at some point in time, if it gets out of hand, public health will be called. Okay. And, I, and I don't know if Kara is on, but I can certainly have Kara tell us what, what the NJDEP has instructed them to do, and I can do that. But I will tell you, I mean, they're, they're not going to be out there on day when I can tell you. Okay. They're not, they're not like that. That's how it's going to happen. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Right. Uh, do we have anything else? <laughs> okay, do we have any other communications that we've received from the Okay. This is it's not really a communication, but I don't know where else it would go. So, um, the gentleman that we had the moment of silence for earlier, we had talked about the crossing of the bike path on Ocean Heights Avenue a couple of years ago, and, and uh, Summers Point trimmed back their bushes, and it's a lot more visible now, but it's really still so dangerous. You're talking about from the, the, the one from the... Wabash well, uh, and Ocean Heights. Yeah, yeah, but it's between uh, uh, Main Point. Street and... Uh, no, Summers Point and Linwood. Summers Point and Linwood, okay. Right. So it's between Summers Point and Linwood, and it's a county road. Um, I really... I mean, somebody has died now. It, it need, there needs to be a stop sign there, or some kind of lighting, flashing light. Some Something has to happen there, because it is very dangerous. 
the only people who, well, not the only people, but more often the people who slow down there are people who ride their bikes because they know it's happening. But people speed on that road terribly. And, and it, it's, now it's, here it is. I just want to mention that. Yeah, I believe there are stop signs for the bicycles on the bike path, but yeah, people but just rush yeah. yeah. Right, good. You have the more powerful, Weapon, <laughs> you know, you have to you become you have to be more accountable, more responsible. Right, right. Oh, well, exactly. But it goes, but it goes both ways. It does, it does. The pedestrians and, and bicyclists, you know, need to be aware. And, you know, they, they, the county put big stop signs right there, and bicycles still drive right. It's a bad intersection. Mm -hmm. Bad intersection. It's very um, dark at night. It's dark at night. Again, you know, talked about you know trying to get across the street to this parking lot. You know, in the summertime, you see how many people you know go across Ocean Lakes Avenue at that bike bed. Um, yeah, you know, it's tough. But you know what? Here in Ocean City, you put one toe into the crosswalk, everything stops. That's right. Here, you put your whole body in the middle of the street, and the cars are over here. Right? You know, we need something there, Jerry. Let's look at that. You get the ticket. Yeah. Only yeah. Ocean City, you pull on the bike path, you get the ticket. Okay. Yeah. There's no reason. Yeah. There's zero tolerance for that. Zero. I think it's difficult because it's two towns and a county. So, but, but we all need to, to stand together to deal with that. Yes. Absolutely. Thank you. Do we have anything else for our commissioners? Seeing none, I uh, will now open uh, the public com comments portion. Anyone that would like to speak during public comments, please come to the podium, state your name and the town you reside. You'll be provided uh, three minutes to speak. And again, if anybody is attending virtually, uh, put yes in the question and answer box. You'll be raised from an attendee to a panelist. When you're raised, again, state your name and the town you reside. Absolutely, come along. Commissioners, everybody, my name is Joan Brennan, and I actually live on Dolphin Avenue, and I did receive one of those letters in the mail, and I am upset. I think I actually spoke to him on the phone. The way he, he spoke just now, I, he, he said exactly what he said to me on the phone, that they were going to be doing a... Uh, I think I spoke to you on the phone, correct? Your name is from Mayor. Joan. Right here. Uh, I spoke to him um, on the phone about, um, I asked him a few questions about why they were actually building the building, uh, what was the necessity of it. I've lived on Dauphin Avenue since 2003. I was born and raised in Northfield, so I know the street, I know the traffic. It has been an ongoing problem. It gets worse every day. It gets. It seems like it's a, it's a, a cutoff for for anybody that's coming down either new road to cut off to come down here to Shore Road or the other way around, the traffic has gotten considerably worse. Um, it, and actually, a lot of the traffic, uh, the speeders are county employees that come down the street. Um, I don't know who they are. I just see them driving, and they're either late for work, or they're trying to get to the county building, or they're going to Meadowview, or whatever. It's very difficult to even cross the street some days because it's so busy. Um, I uh, had, like I said, I received a letter. I know I only have three minutes. Uh, I received a letter from uh, the um, Dubois and Associates stating that there, it's a proposed, uh, and it, is it a finished scenario? I, I don't know. I know that it's proposed, and I'm, I, I am, um, I, I do not want them to build the building there. I, I'm wondering if they can add on to the building in the back because it's, it is going to, no matter what, they'll add on to that building, they'll do something, and you said they were actually going to increase it, they wanted to do two-story. It is incredibly. Well, you, 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 you to, to get that information, you had to speak to uh, Jerry Griffin, who's our facilities, yeah, our facilities director. Yeah. Just so you know, there's, there's, we're not putting two stories on the building. We're, well, we're, we're about to. The, the letter that they sent us, it's a terrible rendition of where this is going to be. And if you all leave here, when you leave here, it's actually going to be the last street on the right. 
that you can right. turn into. It's an old parking lot that someone said there was a house that used to be there. Yeah, we used to have our youth our youth shelter and emergency management used to be in that facility. And, so and I guess they got down there. But anyway, um, I'm just wondering if there's a way that we can, you possibly can add on to the building at the back to keep the traffic down to a minimum possibly. And, and like you said, or Jerry said, the construction for one year of having trucks, I mean, when they do anything up here, the traffic comes from down on your road, off to the road, the dump trucks, the drivers on the dump trucks are speeding, they're going 60, 70 miles an hour. The police in Northfield do not park their truck, their cars over here. They don't pull them over. They, I've gone and complained the traffic gets worse and worse at times, especially during the summertime or when they're doing any construction up here. Um, and so I'm asking if they could possibly just add on to the building back there and save taxpayers a lot of money, for example. Uh, another thing is the cost of goods right now is triple the amount of what it was two years ago. So that is another, it offends me that we're doing any kind of construction right now because it's very expensive. I just did some work on my house and it cost me triple the amount to do it. So I know what the cost of goods are and I'm a buyer for a food distributor and it, it is quadruple. Um, so um, anyway, um, I know that you had already discussed why they're building it yes. and that they're basically they're not going to be having more people in there but it will get utilized the building isn't going to be put up because it's just for warehousing or furniture and I know Jerry said that to me and they were going to be doing some training but they already did some of the training in the last election and they did it all in the back and I spoke to people that were at the train, and he said it was very little. They only had to go twice. So the cost of that alone is insane. Um, to build a 10,000 square foot building for just use of, a, you know, once in a while they're going to need it, it doesn't make sense to me. But I'm just stating. But I, I mean, I don't think that's true. And no, okay. It's for no, regular storage yeah. of, of new loading. So where machines. are they storing it? Current. No, no, no. They're just 10,000 square feet. It's 2,500 square feet for the training facility for the, for the police, and the 7,500 is to store our equipment. So we we don't have a place to store the equipment. We'd have to go lease space. Right. That's it. That's exact. Just so you know, you you voted on, and we presently are leasing space in Ave Harbor City to store all furniture, computers, whatever it is, that there is no other place to put it. We don't have any other space to do that. So that, that's what we're, that's what we're so doing. So leasing versus the building itself. That, that, that's correct. Yes. So correct. it's, yeah. you know, 10 million or whatever it's going to be versus, you know, $500 a month to lease a couple of yeah, spaces. It's not, it's not, I don't, it's not, I don't know what it is. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to give you an example of what my thought process is during this horrible time. During the, um, this last city council meeting in Northfield, uh, Erlen Chow, uh, the mayor of Northfield, said that um, he also had received an email from Dennis Levinson saying that they were considering uh, doing a senior citizen facility on this street as well. Um, I don't know if anybody has any knowledge of that. Um, is that on the agenda coming up? Do you have any idea? Oh, oh. What happened was is we, we got a request to use the property to build senior housing. And so, so and we have property, a meeting with... Are we talking about where there's 550 people buried? Is that where we're talking about on this hill no, over here? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's for, further back on that property. So wait a minute. We yeah. don't even know where these people are buried. We know they're buried over here. Yeah. But we don't... I mean, they, built, they already put a parking lot back there. Yeah. And we don't know... And we know they attempted to build on that property before and found bones. So, are they going to build a? Has that already? No, it has nothing. We haven't met, met with the city. We're meeting with the city to, to, to discuss it. The, the people that came to the county, obviously, it's our property. But we don't. Just so you understand, we don't do things in, in municipalities unless we discuss it with the municipality. So this is we're meeting with the municipality. We, we wrote them a letter basically asking would they would they be interested in having the conversation. So it hasn't gone anywhere. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. you realize that there could be right. more than 550 people already back there. 
Well, I can tell it's you this. It's a burial ground. Well, I can tell you, our planning director is on. Our planning director told, told me that he, uh, some of the literature he has read is they have roughly 2,700 people buried. Correct. 2,700 plus. This is right. this is currently yes. what, yeah. and my mother worked yeah. on this project yeah. before she passed away. Yeah. yeah. This is 550 people that we know of. Right. right. But we know there are more right. back there. Right. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is, why would we want to disturb that property and put a senior village back there? Yeah, but you have to understand, Ms. Brennan, we, we, there's lots of property, and, and there's also property that fronts Route 9. So we're not sure. We're, having, we're going to have a conversation with, with uh, Northfield. We don't even know what's going to happen yet. But I can tell you this. The, we, we're not going to be... You're not so going to be on that, that uh, cemetery, I can tell you right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want right. to voice my, my right. you know, my, um, you right. know, basically, I, I'm asking that you, you reconsider putting that right. 10,000 square right. foot building back there because the traffic is already bad enough. And it, God forbid you decide you want to put a senior citizen village across the street from my house. It would be a complete and total, utter nightmare to me. It would. Thank you. Very good. No, thank, thank you. We appreciate you being Yeah, no, my pleasure. Okay, do we have anybody else with the public that would like to come forward? Yes. Um, my name is Christine Thompson, and I live at 1403 Wabash Avenue in Northfield. Um, I don't have much to say, um, just that um, I think that a 10,000 square foot warehouse is more suitable for maybe an industrial park than a, a street where people reside. And, um, you know, what, what, what people's homes are where they, where they retreat from, you know, from the hustle and bustle of life. And, it just seems so inappropriate for people to look out at a huge industrial type warehouse in front of their house. So that's really all I have to say. I just think it's it's not suitable for uh, um, for our, for our community. So thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody else from the public? This Friday, April 22nd, is birthday, which reminds us the importance of taking care of our planet and investing in it. There are several events this weekend uh, throughout the county, including Earth Day Festival, Sunday, April 24th, and some of us will be there. Sponsored by the ACUA, starting at 10 a.m. at their A. Harbor Township location on Delilah Road. And uh, Friday, April 29th, is Arbor Day. Landon County will join the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Arbor Day Foundation and the 105th anniversary of Arbor Day by offering free tree seedling bundles uh, starting at 8 a.m. to the first 200 residents while supplies last at the Warren E. Fox Nature Center in the Atlanta County Park, Route 50 and in Estelle Manor. Uh, you can also, for more information, contact the Division of Parks and Rec Recreation. And uh, May 4th, friendly reminder that May 4th is fast approaching when a statewide ban on the back. So we already discussed that a little bit. And that's all I have. Anybody else? Has oh. yeah. uh, I'd just like to remind everybody, May 4th is also the day that uh, we were are having the dedication ceremony of the uh, Central Municipal Court Complex in Mays Landing. Uh, I know all of you either have or should have gotten <coughs> invitations. I hope to see you there. Uh, we're, um, in addition to the dedication of the court, we're going to be dedicating three of the courtrooms inside that facility. And uh, we have uh, wonderful honorees. We have Judge Julio Mendez, who will be honored. Um, also, uh, uh, retired Judge uh, Valerie Armstrong, who was the first uh, female assignment judge in this county. And then we'll be honoring posthumously uh, the Honorable Herbert Jacobs, who was the first African-American judge 
in the state of New Jersey. And at the time he was appointed, I believe his son Joe told me, I could be, I believe he was the youngest uh, judge ever appointed. He was appointed to what was then called the district court. Um, but really it's the same thing as a superior, he does, did what a superior court uh, judge now does. They are the three honorees. Judge Jacobs uh, unfortunately passed away, I believe it was back in either 1977 or 1978. But his son Joe will be there with other members of the family. So we, we think it's just, uh, you know, honoring people um, who have made a difference in, in this county. And uh, so we'd like to see all of you there. So thank you. Uh, anything else for the review order? Okay, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. I mean, second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.